Hello and good morning, Smite Game. Welcome on in. EMEA, the Swiss stage continues, and we're getting to the really exciting part of what makes a Swiss so great. Malum and Trelly Relly to bring you the action this morning, and that action's going to be on the battleground. If you want to get into the battleground of the gods yourself for Smite 2, exclamation point access in the Twitch chat right now. Follow the steps and then put in the secret code, which I'll share with you, and you can see it on your screen too. So. You know, secrets out. So Smite two esports will be the code you enter in. Get yourself playing in Smite two today, and if you enjoy it, consider grabbing a founders pack as well. Of course, Trelly EMEA. We've been talking about it all week. The build up was real yesterday on Smite too long. Didn't watch. You actually got to give us a deep dive on EMEA, and we got to start off with it. You can't really beat that combination. You absolutely can, and because you know we're on week three, that means these games are extremely important. We're talking about promotion games and demotion games all of which I mean a lot is on the line maybe you were coasting your way through thinking we've got you know we've got some time we have some some wiggle room between you know when we're going to be able to skip the playoffs or get knocked down that's not really the case anymore for these squads it's really not let's take a look at the bracket keep ourselves updated and in the loop of what's actually going on and as Trelly mentioned you can see those teams that are ready to advance at the top with the 2-0 games Team Risk versus Smoke Break and Mockingbird versus Team Giovanni Giorgio. One of those four or two of those four are going to be advancing if they get their third win of the Swiss stage. All the way down to the bottom of the bracket, the 0-2 side. Someone's going home. So it's a fight for survival. We're actually starting off today with Threat Level Midnight versus Let's Go Asgard again. MMB and Project Win also fighting to stay alive. So you know, di different situations for sure, Trelly. But as we look at the schedule, it's really important to to understand that because of how Swiss is in general, four teams like what we're starting off with, Threat Level Midnight versus Let's Go Asgard again. If you do survive elimination, you do really buy yourself a lot more time and it's more time to improve. And just, it, Swiss leaves a lot of room for that time to improve. And something else to note, just because if you go 0 and 3, it does not mean you are out of the Founders series. It means you are out of the Swiss bracket. You still will have an opportunity to fight back in. Uh, it's just your time here in Swiss will be exactly. done and you got to go back to the drawing board. So if, you, if you're really rooting for one of these squads, it's 0 and 2 or both of these squads. Uh, you know, you won't see the last of them. You just won't see them in Swiss any longer if they get that third loss. And that goes for anyone, even if you go, you know. One and three, two and three, whatever it is. Whatever if you get three be. losses, you're gone. And that was something we talked about a lot leading up to the start of Founder Series was the, the benefit of winning out in the Swiss stage is very significant. You skip right to the playoffs, and that amount of time you could buy yourself is no laughing matter. But like you said, if you do fall out, you're into the last chance qualifier, where it will be incredibly competitive. So as you mentioned, Trelly, while you are still safe, you're still in the road to Vegas, it's really time to, uh, to to board up the windows and batten down hatches in that scenario. Exactly, and that's the thing. Uh, I think just trying to improve your team skills as quickly and as fluently as possible should be your mindset here. Of course, just skipping to playoffs is fantastic, but I would argue in, in Smite's competitive history, the teams that have fought their way through the gauntlet, not the ones that have just won out, have usually came out better for it. Uh, so you could get a, an extra level of practice if you are able to do that. Not saying you should shoot for it, but hey, if it happens, take it as some extra practice uh, and just lock in because Vegas, that's where you want to go undefeated. Up until now, could just be a learning lesson. I'd love to see a gauntlet team make the run for Vegas, but we got to start on a smaller scale. We got to start with our first game of today. Let's get into picks and bans for our first set, which again, threat level midnight versus let's go Asgard again. Trelly, there's been a lot of meta changes, a ton of patches, a lot more gods available as well. The only god banned this weekend is currently Amaterasu, so a lot of new looks we could see. Absolutely is. Odin, definitely still a conversation starter. Fenrir, top of the tier list. Jing Wei has been in that conversation. Uh, we'll have to see what Let's Go Asgard is worried about. You assume it would be the Fenrir, but again, uh, there has been a different meta forming every single weekend. And because there's new gods allowed every single weekend, you have to think about the things with the Baron. And that is going to be what Let's Go Asgard is thinking about. And they will take that one away. The first time Baron's been competitively viable and we will not see him in game number one. But is Yamoja the talk of the town? I guess would be the question. As far as I'm concerned, Baron is definitely, of the two new gods being added into the mix, 
Baron was the one that was uh, more so in contention. So I, I wouldn't hate the Fenrir pickup here from threat level, but that Yemoja still could be the idea. And it looks like that new hotness is what they're looking for and they will grab it first pick. The shiny new toy, a bit too tempting for threat level midnight to ignore. Let's go Asgard now have plenty of options. We've seen the combination of going with a Bacchus, Ymir and spreading that around. And again, as Trelly mentioned, the Fenrir has been before Yamoja and Baron came to town, even with new gods, Fenrir was the talk of the town and how much Fenrir was controlling the map. With everybody going phantom shells, there was a big lack of purification beads being Susano. picked up, which opened up a lot for Fenrir. But he'll be combined with Sasano for Let's Go Asgard again, who also has been making some pretty impressive gains up the charts, but did receive some nerfs prior to today's events and games. Specifically in... EMEA, we haven't seen a lot of this, but we've even seen Susano played uh, in that carry role uh, pretty much just from Tech Beer. So could be an option, yeah, probably not, Tech but Beer. we do have to open up that possibility just in case uh, it gets locked in. But your jungle options are getting limited, I was going to say. So if Threat Level wants to go ahead and grab themselves something like the Loki or the Phantos, they will do just that. And it will be the Loki. So Loki and Yamoja is our option for now. Good team fight presence, uh, single target damage heavy just on the Loki, so maybe some more AOE could be the call. I'm wondering what your solo lane pick is, because you assume that Federator is either going solo or support with the Susano locked in. And if that's the case, not a lot of gods uh, do well into the Fenrir solo. Ymir comes to mind. Ymir kind of loses to just about no one. On my but let's go ahead and grab the Hecate. It's quite and simple. you don't really got to worry about solo for now. Wait till you see your, your possible matchup and just grab one of the best mid laners in the game. She is just so undeniable. Uh, North America has shown it to a, an insane extent. EMEA as well. I think of players like Theeks who have made the, the Hecate look so insane up to this point. But grabbing it and locking it down early is as great as it is, I'm still surprised. No, no Bacchus, no Ymir up to this point, which have been so far. I mean, alongside maybe a Neath, <laughs> those have been like consistent top three. So to see that, at least to this point, not be the case, has been very, very interesting. Maybe let's go Asgard and grab that up here because the you could still go with the Ymir Bacchus. And to your point, Trelly, there's not many good options into the Fenrir. So you take it away, maybe less good. But Anubis will be the choice and. Boy, a, uh, a polarizing character at the moment in the form of that Anubis. Yeah, one of the clips that I shared on Smite Too Long Didn't Watch was actually Distort Distortion F, this side, <laughs> uh, playing that Anubis solo. So again, we still aren't quite sure if solo has been locked in for Let's Go Asgard. There could be a world where it's just mid jungle and support. Could be a world where that's solo jungle and mid. Gonna be fun. We'll have to see. Jingwei, unfortunately, does not answer that question. The last pick will tell us a lot more um, about where these pickups are going, but I still think Ymir could be a solo solo lane pick for Threat Level Midnight. They could just go into something like the Chalk if they're not really interested uh, in in the more in more magical solo laners. Um, but only time will tell. It looks like as you were talking about that Neath is going to get locked in here, which is still, I mean, a fantastic pickup. You don't really need true auto attack damage on it. You could just go straight intelligence, which has been the case more often than not. It works out extremely well. Or if you're feeling spicy. You can just go full crit, strength-based, and that still does work out quite well. Neath did take some nerfs as well. Uh, we mentioned it, but a lot of balance patches before the games that are played this weekend. But those are nerfs to a character who was essentially one-shotting everyone in her sights. So I still expect the Neath to perform well should you go with that full nuke intelligence build. But Charlie, we, we danced around it. Finally, we get it. Threat of Midnight do lock in the Ymir. So should be going solo into the Fenrir, which leaves the big question. Let's go Asgard. One more pick. Where do they go? Do they lock in something like the Chalk for solo late or was the Fenrir solo the whole time? And they go for like an Athena support or secret third option. Was it Fenrir support Anubis solo? And we're looking for a mid laner. At this point, I imagine we're looking for a Guardian, but there are just so many options again fenrir versus ymir not the best matchup i think ymir is gonna win that trade more often than not but ymir also just has a fantastic time against just about everyone in the solo lane with the hades lock-in i assume fenrir support hades solo anubis mid two snow jungle jingwei adc um that's where i'm locking things in but again 
Smite 2 brings so much diversity in builds. Hybrid builds mean that just about anyone can play anywhere as long as you have some sort of plan uh, around that pickup. And I've seen Anubis Solo. I've seen Hades Support. I've seen Hades Mid. You know, I, I've seen a lot. But uh, for my money, that's where I would lock everything. I think that's the best allocation of these resources. But remember, it's do or die time for these teams. Um, so I don't mind whipping out some strange draft to try and throw the enemy team off their track. When I think of Hades, I think of a character we have not really seen do bad up to this point. If you go back to the open tournaments leading up to the Founder series, Hades was performing very well. And Hades, as a character, has always been one of the complicated lore where he's always been really good. So as we get in the game between Threat Level Midnight and Let's Go Asgard again, we'll see if the Hades will be the... Uh, will be that big, big difference maker for sure, Trelly. Uh, it's tough to imagine he won't be for sure. They have so much CC as well. Look at the beads burn on Let's Go Asgard. You got the Fenrir, the Anubis, the Hades, all of which uh, could be a problem if you end up getting locked in, but it depends on how you're building. And you can see relic wise, oh my goodness, Let's Go Asgard, <laughs> oh my just five shells. They're not worried about any bit of CC, but they're level midnight. They have three sets of beads, which you do have to watch out for. It is going to be uh, that allocation that I assumed with the uh, Fenrir playing in that support role. But I like the start here from Sonic. This Hades just going conduit into, you can only assume um, some extra intelligence, maybe some magic defense, that kind of thing will help you out a ton up against the Humir. The big difference being the health potion health chalice combination for Ymir, so we'll see how long the Ymir can sustain through the damage of Hades. Hades, of course, with his own sustain should be fine on that regard. No crazy starts, though. No invades, no 5v5s in the jungle, no nothing, really. The biggest Lame. thing I do notice is that Distortion cleared the red buff. Does that hurt the Loki a lot for the side of TLM? I mean, it depends on how you like to start. I would say there's no real true meta just yet. As a mid laner, I'm furious, right? I understand that Ymir is going to use the red buff better than me early on, but I always at least want the red buff XP. So if I'm cryonic, I'm like, that's messed up. But at the end of the day, there are ways for Archie to make up for that farm. Like cryonic just has to try and steal away the, the mid buff uh, and try and work out from there. But at the end of the day, part two, yeah, Ymir with red buff level two, probably the highest kill potential in the game, I would argue. So not a wasted buff by any means, but you are going to change the way that Archie uh, and Cryonic want to play early game. Especially because Archie didn't get that side buff, nor did Cryonic that went to Let's Go Asgard. They went back to their own red. So Archie has just kind of been starved at the moment. Let's we'll see how much it does end up mattering. And if maybe that forces Archie to the left side, Distortion taking a lot of damage has to back up, but the minions were there still. And I'm sure Sonic is happy to start aggressing onto that totem in the meantime and maybe set some aggressive positioning. Could be a kill here. All Wait, you would need. Hello? Ymir? Yeah, Caustic buff? Say. The oh. shell. One more we two? We saw five of them. There it One is. One more. Surely? Yeah. Got him. Wow. That could not have been drawn out any longer. First blood for Threat Level Midnight. Good thing they got it too because not long before Let's Go Asgard get one back and then trade it back again. So two total kills for TLM, one of which did go to Archie. So those early problems we were talking about, we already found a solution. Yeah, but the Fenrir already rotated out. You can see Taylor was hiding in the jungle trying to see if Archie was going to step up. Does not reveal it. So there should be a little bit more pressure in duo lane going over to threat level midnight. They definitely made out better uh, on this side of the map for now, just because of, you know, getting some extra farm. And of course, that first blood going into distortion app. I'm going to call it a red buff dip. I mean, the red buff tick damage definitely helped out. And of course, just being able to chase down and continue that pressure that Ymir has. Just made sure that he's going to have a rough start. Uh, Sonic, it, it's it's hard to come back from this, honestly, because again, Ymir already just wins so hard early. But if you give him first blood, he's going to hit level five. He's going to have some good kill potential. Remember, Sonic went shell, so no beads available. A couple stuns. Oh my goodness. Well, bubble bounce. Oh okay. Fix up the kill. <laughs> Taylor, what are you doing? Right in the solo lane, right after that kill, there was a pickup for Let's Go Asgard again. But, I mean, uh, the bubbles take the priority in my brain. The bubbles were crazy. I mean, obviously, Valerian's doing a lot of damage on the Neath, but the bubble setup was just perfect. And TLM, uh, that's more than worth keeping an eye on, and, uh, on if that Neath can be spoon-fed by the Emoja the further and further we get.
Were you watching uh, This Week in Smite 2 yesterday? Of course. Yeah, so you got to see Shinto teaching us how to count to the Yes. <laughs> With the it was in bubbles. my head, actually. Well, <laughs> here we go. Maybe we start counting again. Taylor gonna have to get out of here. Neat all confirms it. Man, you do not want to mess with the Emoja damage right now, unless the Emoja left on their own and pulled it to Anubis old, in which case you can mess with Sasuke. No problem. Uh, and that is going to be the return kill. Hey, listen, if, if threat level midnight's pulling a kill, you better believe Let's Go Asgard is there to try and return in. They've been pretty consistent about it. It's still a lead building up for threat level midnight, but uh, I do like the positioning so far of Relic. I've been a part of every single one of these kills, 1-0 oh, and yeah. 2. Doesn't seem like the Susano is going to be stopping. A great answer to, to Archie, who had caught back up and gotten ahead due to the fight in mid lane to get back in front and control it. Sasano is a character right now who, no secret to anybody, if you are making the character work, if you're moving around the map quickly and you're picking up those kills, he just can really start to steamroll early on. Ymir, more damage on Asana. Speaking of that, Sasano, he's here. Pillar of Agony. Let's all, why not? That's going to be three in total, but it'll equal one dead. Ymir, with no answer from threat level midnight. Wow, I mean, that, that phantom shit was necessary. That was a fully charged shard of ice. Would have been able to find a kill. And actually, it's Bloodbound Book picked up from Sonic. Not what I expected. Definitely a solid buy. I mean, it's going to give you that extra shielding with the active effect. And of course, a little bit of life steal never hurt a Hades. But I thought a little bit more tank stats would have been the call. Looks like not something that Sonic was worried about. Oh, one and two. But again, Relic has been the driving force behind Let's Go Asgard. 2-0-2 oh, now, and picked up a Jotun's Revenge. If you're talking about scaling, Archie has the late game in, in spades with this Transcendence start, but for early game alone, this, this Transcendence it doesn't even count as an item until it's stacked up, really. Like, our Archie cannot hope to match uh, the DPS of Relic starting that Jotun's Revenge. So, uh, if we're talking about team fight presence alone, Let's Go Asgard should be in a pretty good spot. It's been close so far. Relic has been the difference maker across the entirety of the map. Now looking duo, pull in, damage okay, but not gonna commit under the tower, even with the Fenrir nearby. The Emoja, who, you know, speaking of Smite too long, didn't watch, and, you know, just clips in general from this week in Smite, watch for the genetics Emoja as well, with all the keyboard slamming. See if that's the case. Maybe right there, Star Pond dealing with a lot, but avoids the Mez, that was a dangerous one. Solo lane, gank out. Archie trying to catch up. There's the assassinate combined with the glacial strike. Surely, maybe not though. The dash away wall? from Sonic. Okay. There's there the wall. Is. Little delayed, oh. but the dash was up because you got to use the dash oh, from your no. ult. But now Fenrir's here. The Ragnarok back. That might just be a kill. Big time pickups for TLM. My goodness, man. It was beautifully played because again, when you when you use this Hades ult, when you use Pillars of Agony, you have your choice of what ability you want to use with no cooldown. And the dash was definitely the call there. Sonic used the dash, immediately had the second dash to get out even if the wall was there, and that gets you out of trouble. Also immuned the shards of ice from Distortion who tried to fully charge it. Did not end up working out, but look at this tech from Distortion. Ends up going the Triton's Conch, yes, but that little tier one item before is actually a small bit of anti-heal. So picked up like the smallest amount of anti-heal you can get without committing to a full item just to try and deal with the, the Bloodbound book and the and the healing of Hades, and then goes into the full Triton's Con. So that's not bad. Like, like I do like this, where you don't really commit to like a divine or anything like that, but you do just have your extra anti-heal just for like a tier two item. That's a great use of your gold. 30% for autos, but you're doing anyway on Ymir. It does feel like perfect synergy and trouble again for Sonic just hurts. That Ymir hurts. The Phantom Shell out, though, as has been the case. And an instant retreat away from Sonic. The Sasano is nearby. Same with the Fenrir. So if TLM lurked too long, there could certainly be some trouble. I mean, you see a lot of red rotating right. TLM should have time to get away from this, surely. And there is no buff. So there's no reason to fall for this bait here. Distortion Knife doesn't have to try and defend red or blue. You just sit underneath your tower and you should be fine. As long as you keep shards of ice, it's not as if uh, Taylor's going to be able to pull you out. So definitely like the call to play a passive there. Just continue farming. I was watching that possible 2v1 in mid. And you got to remember, Star Pond doesn't have beads, right? It is the Phantom Shell. So anytime Open the Gates comes through, you're going to be getting the laser eyes. You're going to just be trading ultimates. 
but as long as Cryonic goes the tried and true Chronos Pendant, you should be able to find a moment where you can pull a Star Pawn pretty easily uh, with that ability, especially because if Sasuke is there, I'll hold that thought. No, distortion. We had a deal. You weren't going to step up, man. Come on. Wow. <laughs> Pays for it big time. I mean, that sixth kill has an exclamation point to it. They wanted the Ymir dead. A smart answer, though. Threat level midnight right to the gold fury. And it should be free. Jing Wei not pri privy and not interested in contesting even if they were. Gold fury goes to threat level midnight. That's a smart pickup. And will there be a fight after the fact? Archie may be considering Relic, but with Star Pawn right there. The answer will be take the gold fury and be happy about it. You got to know if you're going to bring four over to right twice, <laughs> right? And then, then gold fury is going to be a serious consideration here. The threat level midnight, definitely a good call to go for the pull immediately. Remember, a lot of stacking being done for threat level midnight. Not as if it's not also being done for let's go Asgard. It's only two items though, whereas you got three full items trying to stack out here. Threat level midnight, Sasuke in some trouble, the Riptide gonna be enough to close gap or open gap i suppose gets you away uh, from that aggression regardless you haven't really hit your final form here you're it's gonna take a while especially for valerion who's double stacking right that book of thought is coming here soon so you're not trying to fight at the moment the fact that you're only about a thousand gold down four to six when you're going for this late game style competition i think flows pretty well for threat level midnight and it feels like they're being wise with their time, with the exception of the, the step up from Distortion, the three deaths you can definitely chalk up to a lot of attention to Solo, and even that step up being a, a mistake, as you had pointed out, obviously we can see everybody on the map, but Distortion can't, you need the senses there, but it is understandable to have died four times, and you keep responding with everybody else. You keep speed running everyone else the later and later you can into their builds. You might be in a real good spot, but I, for me, Trelly, my question goes to Relic. Is that Sasano going to be too much to handle, who's still progressively ahead and getting more and more item spikes online? No, I think that the, the shell is probably going to end up hurting Relic in the long run, just because you can't always be near your support who's going to have that beast. You can see Taylor's building into it right now, so it's going to get online. Ultimate should be able to find the star, but Archie does not want to dive the tower. Probably a smart call. Even if you get that ult off, that shell probably would have been dangerous. Again, Distortion app, as far as I'm concerned, these are ego step ups. Like, you're like, I should be winning this lane. I should be owning you. And because of that, you keep getting yourself caught out. There's no ward coverage. There's no, you know, feeling of, uh, I've stepped up too far. But you're one in five at this point, just off of how much presence Let's Go Asgard has put into this side of the lane. Just because you should be winning lane doesn't necessarily mean you have to. I think bringing all of Let's Go Asgard over to right and not having a successful gank is so impactful. You know, Distortion F clearly wanted to play through this lane and has not learned their lesson yet. I, it feels weird. I keep looking around at levels and while the gold keeps progressively growing for Let's Go Asgard, everything else feels like it's been maintained despite all the attention to Solo. I mean, there, like you've said it a couple of times, on these ganks, there isn't as much there for Let's Go Asgard to actually get outside of the kill itself onto Ymir. We haven't seen them go and steal the whole jungle away after. Obviously, there's been no Fire Giant, no Pyro for them to pull. They lost the Gold Fury. So at a certain point, do you get diminishing returns and do you put your attention elsewhere? Or how, like, how much longer are we going to see the Ymir have three people over in Solo like we're seeing right now? I mean, Distortion F is at the tower line, so he's learned his lesson clearly. Uh, I, I think they're just testing to see how many times is bro going to walk up past the halfway point, you know? <laughs> like, if, if he keeps doing it... And look, he's warding. See? He's warded. He learned. Let's go. He's been conditioned. He, he got path laws, dog. He's like, you know what? I think I'm ganked here. No yeah, Rippers Rebuke coming out, even with the Neethal. Not enough. Do you have Relic in mid lane? I don't know that you have too much skill potential unless you just drop everything on the Sasuke and they will do just that double ult. And that will confirm it. My goodness. Not very tanky on this Yamoja. That prophetic cloak. Uh, you know, not not enough to get you out of that situation, unfortunately. Beads is picked up now by Sasuke, but I love this call. Let's go Asgard. Pull Gold Fury already. Valeron is here as pretty good verse too. Not going to be easy to steal it away. Watch around the side. Archie Baker looking for it. Decoy out. Damage on. 
Gold Fury goes to, let's go Asgard. Archie's got the first pick. Will the Neath be able to get away? So far damage on, nobody's missed, but the teleport away might be good to keep the Neath alive. Meanwhile, the Anubis in trouble, but the life steal too much for Archie to handle, and the Loki will go down. The rest of Thrill Midnight are trying to retreat. Cryonic might have the hardest time, but a nice River's Rebuke will help keep the Hikati safe, at least from the left side. In mid, same thing. Oh. So Thrill Midnight, not the greatest turnaround they could have had, but it did work okay. And Sasuke's weak. Can anyone stop this back, though? It need to be a he bubble bounce it. or a riptide. <gasps> he's not backing. Yeah, but does he have the kill? I don't know how much healing he can go. He has the laser! What's the help from the Lairon? Oh, the oh, world no. we definitely saved him. My goodness. Oh, no. B's oh, yeah. okay from Cryonic. That was yeah, uh, necessary. That would, have been, that would have been scary. I, 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 I understand that, the panic. Yeah, I thought we still had, you know, 10 shells, but it's only five shells. There are still beads on the side of Threat Level Midnight. Uh, man, Valeron plays that perfectly, though. Goes in for the steal, doesn't quite get it, finds the kill. And then thanks to the beautiful portal from Cryonic, gets you out of trouble. Bax immediately comes back in and then saves Sasuke uh, with that ultimate. Definitely a good look so far, at the very least, from this Neath. And again, Transcendence and Book of Thought of the Call is trying to stack up. This Book of Thought isn't even halfway done, and we're already seeing a ton of burst damage coming from Neath. So much late game commitment from third level midnight and a lot of direct answers for let's go Asgard. I'm looking in particular at the the uh, brawler's ruin for relic really focusing on the, uh, the uh, on the side of the emoja focusing on getting that healing down. That was something that the emoji, I feel like we haven't talked about as much. All the things she does bring the healing you can't really underestimate right now because it's so such a rarity in smite 2. Riptide's pretty helpful too, though, in situations like that. Friendly Cammy gets you out of trouble, no problem. Man, Relic 3 0 and 4. Can anyone shut down the Susano? Definitely gonna try to. But the Assassinate not gonna be enough damage and plenty of movement for Relic here. Archie just cannot keep up itemization wise at the moment. Sitting 2 and 1. Okay. Oh, here we go. A little bit of a pickup, but Purification gets used. Empty the gates just to get you out of trouble. Sorry, open the gates. There's no emptying of the gates. A lot of action happening just about everywhere, Malum. I know. I, I, like every time you're stop. trying to walk us through the next thing, the teams, it's like they hear you and they say, oh, so we fight here, surely. <laughs> it's I been every single time. Man. Oh, boy, just go for Pyro, man. It's also not. Can they get it? A where is TLM? They've got the emoji close by. Here's the contest. Going to be a close call for the Pyro. It goes to Let's Go Asgard, thanks to the Death Gaze. Will there be any picks to follow? The Rooster Buke? Well, remember, five Phantom Shells. So is anybody really in danger? Maybe with the Hades lurking, but no commitment from Let's Go Asgard. They get the Pyro. They're happy with it. 16 and a half minutes now with a gold lead. Growing and growing. We're around that 5k mark, which has been the point where the, the largest point we've seen. And it's interesting to me how quickly it grows. It was like the first 10 minutes, it was kind of close. Then we saw a two minute jump to around 3K and it's continuing to spike. The kills are six to nine, but I think the, the map story has been the most interesting so far. Certainly has been. And remember now there's a Runic Bomb in play. There's only one Sunder and that's been on the side of Distortion F. The Runic Bomb is going to trump that every single time. And that is in favor of Sonic for the time being. So if there is any objective play coming soon, you got to give a little bit of a lean over to Let's Go Asgard. And not just in burst, in shred as well. We're talking about double crit Jing Wei and an Anubis. So Fire Giant really could be shredded down at any moment. Distortion F, not even safe at your own blue buff, but living a long time. Can the team get here? I don't think so. They do get here after the fact. No Open way. the gates brings back oh. two. Archie's waiting as well. So it's a one for one trade so far. But here come the rest of them. A big time answer from threat level midnight. Distortion still died, but finally a response. Petrelli, the opposite of what we've seen throughout this game. Let's go Asgard say, oh, all right. You finally sent the response crew to right. Gold Fury, that we're going to be taking that. Will the Neath get there in time? No, they will not. Starpawn able to pick up the gold. The second one for Let's Go Asgard. Beautiful call. I mean, you're, you're pressuring right while also getting objectives on left. It's, it's a very aggressive play style, but it's working out because of how split threat level midnight has been as well. I mean, Valeron has been in the right place at the right time, just doesn't have the damage 
unfortunately to try and go in for these steals a 1v1 would be great to try and win ultimate blue shell i think that has enough damage but oh just barely misses it and that's not a blue stone as the sands of time would have needed the full soul reaver to find that kill unfortunately but you get that shell down there are small wins but again have you mentioned or as you've mentioned with five shells are you ever really capitalizing on having one down uh not looking too great regardless of that just goes to show exactly how much damage this needs can really pump out 611 just from uh that world weaver and that's not counting in a caustic buff or a and soul, now the reaver. soul reaver is online yeah it's gonna be chunking a lot harder next time the next fight i feel like we have to keep our eyes on the anubis too in the last and then the only true team fights we've had the anubis continually continually feels almost like he's not frontlining, but he's been very pushed far forward. There hasn't been a backline Anubis doing damage so far for Let's Go Asgard. Maybe that's going to be a turning point. And I guess my question, Trelly, Archie, three kills so far, but I feel like they've all been opportunity kills, which, so sure, that's Loki's thing. But in a team fight with how Let's Go Asgard have been playing, what is an Archie, what is a Loki to do in this current situation? Gotta just try and farm up still. I think late game is really where the Loki's gonna come online. The, the Transcendence, Tech Okaki, and Heartseeker is great, but you gotta look at Relic's build. And you, you, you get to see just how outclassed Loki is for the time being. Ultimate off the mark. But a beautiful Rivers of Buke again. Only gonna get the Phantom Shell, but Archie's here to confirm the kill, the assassinate underneath the tower finally has been able to connect and that's gonna put star pawn down what do you do in the meantime if you're threat level midnight you have the one man advantage you gotta try and get aggressive somewhere IRM answer is not gonna be the call it's not up quite yet i don't know what else you could do though it's not like you're going for fire giant there's no other objective so maybe you say More a pick farm? is a pick yeah <laughs> and, you, and you go back to farming we're 20 minutes in though malum it it's not out of the realm of possibility to go for a fire giant. It's just so much easier for Let's Go Asgard. And when you start that dance, how long will you be? Man, that damage from Neath is significant. Disco Fairy, yeah, I'd, I'd be running too after taking that much damage. Archie did do the Archie thing that I was just asking you about. Getting to Star Pond, doing so much damage, even with the shell being utilized. It just feels like Archie was able to find the perfect amount onto the perfect target. So if the if Star Pond continues to be the objective for Archie, I feel like that does open up Cryonic for a lot more. And Cryonic, I've mentioned their name. They've been relatively quiet up to this point, Trilly. We aren't seeing the spell leader one shots we're accustomed to seeing. Open the gates has been used defensively once or twice. We saw the one good offensive one on the blue buff fight a little earlier. Cryonic though might be posturing and setting up for a really big late game with how quiet they've been if they can lock it down. Queen Naga started up. You can see that Let's Go Asgard has infinite burst and infinite shred towards it. Sasuke was walking up, but not going to happen in the face of Relic. Remember, there's already been three Furies going down, so Ancient Fury going to be spawning in here any second now. But look at where Jingwei is. Disco Fairies came all the way over to the right side of the map. So yeah, Pyromancer being looked at. Unless Sasuke has got some bubbles. I could tell. Okay, I was going to say, hey, let's also got the <laughs> bubbles. Yeah, it was a little messy, away. but certainly a little messy. I like the there Ragnarok. There's a lot of, a lot of AoE there. Uh, yeah. Towards the <laughs> but another Runic Bomb drop. That's not been picked up just yet, but Valeron did make that rotation. Just decides to push down the Tier 1 instead. Uh, not a bad look. You recognize, hey, there's no way I'm making it there. And let's just grab some gold in the meantime. With two Tier 1s going in favor of that little Midnight. Not a bad trade. It's interesting to me that Let's Go Asgard didn't make any attempt to defend. They weren't significantly low. And even now, TLM have grouped up in the mid lane as five with Distortion just around the corner. Where do they go from here? You mentioned Ancient Fury is up, and it looks like that's the call. They'll have time to get there. I don't know if they can burst it in time, but Distortion will be able to delay. It's going to be a close one if Let's Go Asgard even are privy. They're just going to go they, fire. They are not caring about Ancient Fury. They're all about that fire giant. Right they go. No answer from TLM. Distortion the closest. Fire started up. A bit slow for the time being. There's going to be more than a chance for Distortion to get there in time. We're going to have a full-on fight, but two members missing for Threat Level Midnight up to this point. There's a buke out. Fire Giant down to 1,000. It goes to TLM. They seal away the fire. The Let's Go Asgard started up. But the fight after the fact already looking real good for Red with two early picks. 
maybe even a third on the back flip. Do you have the spacing? The jump forward from Taylor. The beads is out. The route is good. Valerian's still holding. Cryonic doing what they can in the backflip. Sets up the kill. Now Archie finds Disco Fairy. The fight turns again after the Fire Giant. Unfortunate there. Just could not hold that ultimate long enough. If you get the Ragnarok off onto Valeron before the beads, or after the beads, rather, I think things go a lot better for you. But still grabbing the Ancient Fury as well. I'm amazed. I thought the threat level Midnight would have definitely given that up and ran over immediately. They grab it. They still have the chance to steal it away. Valeron takes it. Sure, you lose a lot, but you still have fire on three, and now you get to push up with it and the benefit of Ancient Fury. So definitely a Best bigger win for threat almost. level Midnight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you can play this at your own speed now. I've been talking about how late game looks a lot better for threat level Midnight just by way of, you know, their builds and such. And I still think that's true. This, this fire giant steal, it goes a long way for them. They can play this slow, knock down some tier ones over on right, tier two or two, put some extra gold in their pocket, and that'll put them in the lead. And credit to Archie Baker as well as Valerian. Both have been playing fantastic, but in that last fight, the Neat surviving and still pouring out damage with Chronic for backup, and Archie being able to systematically remove that back line as much go Asgard as they committed to the chase. The combination was as good as it could get for TLM. Had they not lost members, they would probably have cleared out the map. So for what's going Asgard, I guess you're just happy you got a couple picks. Tier 1 and Solo, pushed out by TLM. Sonic considered even, like even staying for two seconds for a defense, but wisely letting it go. So Tier 1 and Solo will fall. Not everybody here, though, Trelly. Bit of a split. Jingwei looking at the Tier 1 and Duo. Archie pushing out mid. And that's the benefit, right? Disco Fairy recognizes, hey, I can back and fly into any sort of engagement we need, so I'm just going to split push. I'm going to try and get as much gold as possible while you guys put up a soft defense towards the Tier 2. But remember, Archie's doing the same thing. This Loki just trying to grab mid-Tier 2, so it's a 4v4 over on right. And then you got the 1 and the 1 that are just trying to get some extra gold. No ultimates are really going to grab too much pressure here, but Archie is rotating in. See if he can find something. He's going to go for some heart seeker poke. Tier 2 tower picked up by Disco Fairy. Somebody's got to go back and give a response. Disco Fairy baits out the back by the minions. Will not full commit to it quite yet. And TLM, it looks like they're trying to read off of Disco Fairy on how they want to play this before they continue to push up. Disco Fairy now committing to the back and TLM looking at the tier two in the mid lane. Relic almost found some poke. Open the gates could be huge. Brings back one. It's a Fenrir jump gonna be good. Relic dies to Valerian. The poke was enough for them to clean it up and TLM have an opening now for that tier two in the mid lane. Look at all the damage falling onto the head top of let's go Asgard. The rebuke locks down the dog and that's a dead dog indeed. A double kill for the knee to make it a rampage and it's Panic time for Let's Go Asgard. Their Phoenix is still being pushed out. They could lose even more, and they do. A triple kill now. How much more do you got? Archie's got Disco Fairy, and all of a sudden, things blow up in the face of Let's Go Asgard. Only Sonic stands. This was the late game that I was alluding to. Sonic has to try and go for the defense. 1v5, it does not look good. The Titan is the target here. Dash in, can you oh, just no. kill Hades before he does anything? Yes, you absolutely can. Threat level midnight off of a fire giant steal. Take game number one. Uh, crazy, it all goes back to that one fire giant. That feels like it, it was a distant memory, but it's still so prevalent. You you called it perfect. They got the Ancient Fury combined with the Fire Giant onto a few members. They were able to make use of even having it on limited members after they lost a few, and Threat Level Midnight looked fantastic to end out game number one. I, I, early game, mid game, it felt like it was let's go Asgard again, but by late, you kept teasing it, but it ended up being true. There was just no match for TLM. Yeah, the late game is what you're always building towards when you have a pick like Loki, a pick like Neath. Uh, I think your engage also is so much better off the back of a Ymir and a Yamoja, whereas a lot of that weight was put onto Fenrir, which unfortunately, once you get squad purification, that becomes a lot more difficult to try and initiate with. The benefit of Fenrir is when you can build a bit hybrid, but when you go full defense, you are an ult bot. And when your ult just gets completely shut down by beads, I think late game was always going to go. Uh, to threat level midnight and they got to that point the fire giant steel is what cemented it though i think if fire yeah. giant does go the other way 
the snowball could have kept rolling, but that was an immediate halt. That was a brick wall for the snowball. It said, nope, we're, it, it's, it's our turn now. Uh, we're going to run it down. And of course, the 5v5 was just so much better. The 5v5 was so much better. And, and, and you mentioned it best. It was this, this risky call of fire that probably didn't even feel risky to start it out, but it just blew up in the face of let's go Asgard again. And with our short break, they'll have time to look back and review. So we'll see how it improves for them. Game number two, when we come back, don't go anywhere.
And then I said, that's not Bacchus, that's Bilson's mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. sighs> that one always makes me laugh. But enough about my weekend. Hey, Gormizer, what's new with you? Just picked up my Smite 2 Founders Edition. Very nice. Purchased it on my preferred gaming platform just yesterday. Nice skin. It's Kakademon Ymir. It comes with all Smite 2 gods. Forever. That's very cool, Gormizer. But that's nothing. Look at this. Night Stalker Neath and Ascension passes for 11 Alpha Launch gods. What do you think? Geez, that is really super. How do nitwit like you get so tasteful? Can't believe that Dandy prefers Chelly's Founders Edition to mine. Very nice. I impressive. Let's see J Max, Founder Edition. Look at that avatar, badge, and title. The tasteful thickness of Tier 5 Fallen Zeusia. Oh my god, it even comes with Ascension Passes for all 23 Alpha Gods. Don't be like this psycho and upgrade your Founders Edition so you don't miss out on Night Stalker Neath, Tier 5 Fallen Zeus, and Ascension Passes for the first 23 gods. Upgrade today! Welcome back in more Founder Series EMEA to start off your day in a very scary advertisement if you're Gormizer and a very alpha moment for J-Mac. Shout, shout to J-Mac. If you want to experience the tasteful thickness of the Fallen Zeus skin, the way to do that is the Founder's Edition of Smite 2. Look at all that. Look at all the options. You see those check marks on the Ultimate Founder's Edition? You need to grab that one today. Believe me when I say the Ascension Passes have so much cool stuff within them. I'm currently personally working through the grind of the on her one i know trelly's been big on the hecate one so make sure you guys get in there today grab your founders edition and hey if you aren't in smite 2 yet and you want to try it before founders edition exclamation point access in the twitch chat right now follow the steps put in the code that gets you into smite 2 then you can consider and eventually grab the founders edition of the game and upgrade when you are ready but you know game one threat little midnight they were ready for the late game trelly and boy did it show it seemed like they set themselves up for the late game with P's and B's, but also just the way that they built, right? Like they were they were double stacking, they were playing so that they had more DPS later on. Didn't quite have more DPS early game, but that really wasn't the strategy. It was a lot of, hey, we're going to let Distortion F get camped. This Jameer is going to have like five deaths in the first 20 minutes or so. But later on, everyone uh, everyone else on the team will be better off for it. And that's pretty much what happened, right? They, they kind of just said, we're going to ignore you. Sorry in advance, but <laughs> we're going to yeah. prioritize farming and, uh, you know, stepping up to objectives. Even the first two Gold Furies do not go their way, but it was that Fire Giant steal into everyone hitting around level 20. That's when it started looking real clean for Threat Level Midnight. It was the positioning of Distortion that made that Fire Giant just so possible. Mm -hmm. Never left the mid lane. I thought at first we might see a contest of Ancient Fury from Let's Go Asgard again, but instead Distortion just planted mid said, okay, I'll, I guess I'll wait here and see what happens. The fire giant was called and distortion was just right there to say, Hey, I just saw them all walking to fire. They even got a wall off of, you notice to block mm -hmm. a player of let's go Asgard again. And then from there, it was just this slow journey of the rest of well, midnight over to fire. And we know how the game ended. We don't know about is game number two. We certainly know what needs to change. We'll see in picks and bands. Threatful Midnight, they're in a great spot in this best of three for sure. Once again, they're going to have that first pick as well. What are we expecting, Charlie? I mean, I imagine Threat Level Midnight doesn't have to ban the Baron. Again, their first pick, so they could just try and grab that one, no problem. I wonder if the Yemoja uh, gets let through again, um, or at the very least, is if it's the, the same priority level pick for Threat Level Midnight. I don't, I don't think it's a bad call at all. So if you are, let's go Asgard. I think you're putting a rough spot here. I think you have to ban the Baron and you have to give up the Yemoja. Um, but they might try something different again. That did not work last time. It's actually going to be the Neath. So now they position themselves okay. to grab the Emoja after the Baron gets locked in here. Assuming, of course, that Threat Level Baron Midnight values sound. it the way they do. Yep. And they absolutely do. So let's go Asgard is able to grab that Emoja, no problem. 
if this Baron is going to support, they honestly don't even have to grab the Yamoja here unless they just, you know, use that Baron over in solo lane and grab Yamoja as well. That's a scary thought. So I think you just grab Yamoja here. But there might be someone on Lesko Azio who doesn't want to pick Yamoja, right? You might not have that option because Thunder got locked in and that was support last time for Taylor. Looks like they might be going a different way with it because Yamoja is hovered regardless. Do that does mean you can't just stack a bunch of Phantom Shells because now you got to worry about beads as well. You made a really good call with they almost were forced to go the Yamoja because at threat level midnight, God and Baron, God and Yamoja, from there on, they could have essentially picked anything they wanted and it would have been no big deal. They will go the path of the Hecate. So Baron most likely out of the mid lane as we anticipated going into this, especially now with the changes to Baron's kit, Trelly even more suited to that support and or solo role that we're so familiar with from smite number one and just to continue it out that third pickup will be a run back of loki question is where do you go from here let's go asgard has the emoji now they have their fender they know they're up against a lot of cc with baron with hakate and of course with that loki what do you go to try and deal with it? the susana looked good i we, we we sang relics praises for the majority of Especially that early, early game yeah but again, the, the CC, I still think is an issue. You have to worry about it. And it looks like they don't want to worry about it. They're just going to go ahead and grab the Ymir. So maybe Fenrir is just that jungle pickup. Yeah, I, I was I was curious about where it was going to go. If Ymir gets locked in, I do assume you just put Fenrir in the jungle and let Ymir take the solo lane. Um, and yeah, it will happen. So all that's left, you got to worry about that mid laner who's matching up with Hecate. But... I like it so far though. Let's go Asgard has done a night and day switch up. They have plenty of CC. They still have good early game, but with that Jing Wei, uh, they are cementing their late game options as well. No Neath available for TLM, but Kernanos did get some pretty significant buffs. I'm gonna leave the Kernanos talk on the table. Anubis grabbed that by Threat Level Midnight. See, in my brain, we were locked in on the uh, on the Hecate mid. Baron oh, I was looking at are. support. So Anubis solo, yep. this was something we saw a lot. Hey, and we get the current notes potentially. Look at me go. Where's my pat <laughs> on the back? You go, man. <laughs> Last week, we saw a lot of Anubis and to varying degrees of success. I think earlier on in the weekend, he performed significantly better than he did later on in the weekend when there started to be some answers for Anubis being found. Finally, right, but the, the one Much Anubis clip that I did grab was place. from Distortion app on Anubis solo. So hey, he made it look good at least once. Um, didn't end up netting the dub that was necessary but regardless i think you know did fine uh into ymir it's gonna be a rough start but we'll be able to come online and the last pickup of course is going to be the morian uh you've got yourself a loki transformation you have a fenrir that's really all you need but there is still tank options as well if you want to go into a baron or something like that so uh not a bad lookup at all i think it's a decent enough matchup in hecate so uh, i'm not gonna roast that one i do like but let's go Asgard is done here. It seems like they were like, dude, we had such a good early game and then it fell off so hard. Let's make sure we don't have that same level of fall off. The Morgan and Jingwei only going to get better. I mean, throw Ymir into the mix as well. As long as you're not going full damage, his late game initiation is much better than just full tank Fenrir. Um, so I do think it's a good switch up. Whereas threat level Midnight, they're looking a little bit squishy, right? That Their tanks are barren in Anubis. You can still get tanky on these picks, but it does take a little bit longer. Is the trade-off worth it for Threat Level Midnight? They're very squishy. Damage output, I mean, my goodness, it's absolutely insane. But I guess we'll have to ponder how worth it it is. Let's head into game number two, where we can talk about all that juicy gossip, Malum, Trelly, and Doug to bring it to you. So TLM, squishy, but is that damage going to pay off, Trelly? And how does it pay off? Well, this is just if blasphemy. Sasuke is the only I one will. who didn't pick up the brew. You, that, that's your thing, man. That you're, that, This is your brew, and you're not even buying it. That's I'll get it on my first back, guys. I, I hate that. Everyone always says that, and I hate it. You, you're, you're messing out a lot of damage. I do understand the value of a chalice and some wards, though. So uh, we will see exactly how this lane goes. Remember, though, in Smite 1, Baron was the quintessential counter uh, to Yamoja, right? The Riptide never can get you out of that life of the party. Um, it's not as if Yamoja was going to be building beads anyways. This game is no different. Taylor picks up the Sunder. And despite the fact of last game, the counter to Yamoja was five Phantom Shells. Only one picked up this time around, and it's Sasuke. So might be able to hit Pater pretty easily uh, with Maybe the River's Rebuke, but 
the beads uh, that's a different story right the ragnarok the freeze the ultimate that whatever star pawn turns into is likely going to make use of it's gonna have to worry about a lot of cc immunity i do love that relic forces out the relic choices of tlm uh, i feel like that's one of the bigger aspects of control let's go asgard bring because forcing four members onto beads i mean it shows so wise attitude from tlm and respect towards the fenrir but being able to control the selection like that, the biggest being the lack of a Sunder. Sunder has received a lot of nerfs, Trelly, but when there is only one Sunder on the map for the big objectives, one, that person becomes a target, but you feel it. You definitely feel it, and it makes Runic Bomb all the more impactful because you gotta try and confirm it just so you can contest with that Sunder until late game when your mid laners are doing enough to just, you know, override it. Um, but I also like how you Said that relic force is relics i didn't get to give you props on that one but you know well done a little bit of an early rotation but it looks like just some poke is going to be coming through unfortunately oh man a lot, a lot of poke i should say but still not going to net a kill and of course emoji has plenty of sustain for the lane so shouldn't be too big of an issue for disco fairy uh, remember there was a lot of presence over towards distortion f last game that was on a ymir now you're on anubis who at the moment is just full damage I'm thinking Relic should probably pay attention to where Distortion F is positioning in this lane because there's a lot of easy gank opportunities when it's an Anubis you're, you're trying to gank over in solo. Relic did respond with Let's Go Asgard. They went right to that blue jungle off of the gank from Archie and they cleared out the red buff, which as we can see on the map, TLM just discovered the red buff is down. The red did not go to Distortion. So with all that information in pocket, with the the control over the farm that TLM was putting in pocket, the lack of a first blood, and the call is instantly, let's go solo and see if we can find a pick onto Distortion right into that self grass. Relic goes, we'll see if the option's there. Dual lane, some decent damage. The wrap hits on Yamoja, but just not enough for a kill. Uh, yeah, yeah, and look at this. I mean, Relic is still over in solo lane, just waiting. Finally ends up backing up here. As you can tell, Distortion have oh, learned patience. their lesson. Yeah, they learned their lesson. I am not stepping up past the halfway point. I've got beads. I have Baron's Brew and a potion. Like, I've got a lot of different survivability tools. Morgan is in some trouble, though. Just the beads. Beautiful use. Do we have any more damage to find a kill here? Unfortunately, no. And the Baron's Brew off the mark. But at the very least, you're pulling relics, right? I think Archie did waste the beads trying to find that kill, but Darpon a little bit less safe uh, for the time being over in that lane. And the Morgan, without ultimate, not very safe right if you can predict where that stealth goes or get a little bit of tick damage with something like a caustic buff or a loki 2 you can really track her down quite easily you can get tracked down venrir now over the side but no ultimate only level four not going to net in any sort of action dude i i just be simply waiting for level five valeria is not stepping up i don't even like ganking until i get my ultimate Horn Charge just goes so far. Distortion almost got popped by that Glacial Strike of the mirror. It did a lot. But no, I, I noticed there that Larion basically dashed on the sound of <laughs> of the runes from Fenrir. As soon as you hear that howl, it's time to go. So like you said, level five, we'll see if the Fenrir does go back. Archie lurking in duo yet again on that Loki. Right now grabbing a farm, but we'll see how it goes because purple's spawning. The buffs are cleared for Let's Go Asgard, so they're going to run into Loki in the jungle. This could be, uh, we could be a couple steps away from a decent fight here, or Archie will just walk away, which appears to be the case. Objective completed, farm stolen. Yeah, Archie not finishing that first item just yet. Doesn't feel too confident in looking for the scrap. There is a bit of an ultimate here. Uh, I think probably meant to jump in forward, but Taylor ends up falling down. Do you get life of the party stun? You do, and nice. your polymorph, do you have the damage though? Does not seem like, wait, there's no way. Got oh him. my goodness, <laughs> this case, him, bro. That was clean. That was so clean. The first blood was, was cool, but the second blood, that had the highlight to it. That's two for TLM. Maybe a third in mid, but the beads comes out from Star Pond to stay safe. But still taking a lot of damage as well. But actually going aggressive. Turns like Cryonic, the damage turning around, the shield out. Oh, leader two! Wow! Cryonic pulls through. I thought maybe the spell leader would do it. That didn't. So I said, okay, shield something, and it does work out. Cryonic with the big time solo and able to get away. Oh, we do have an ultimate here. Assassinate available, so Archie is in literally zero danger. Might even try and turn this 
aggressively. Definitely goes Feeling for it. it. Do you have the vanish? It's you anything. Know. Decoy doesn't hit either. Oh, yep. that's got to be frustrating for Archie. A nice turnaround for sure, but it's not able to lock down the kill. Yeah, you, you just got to save that ultimate four vanish. But regardless, beautifully played by Cryonic. And the level up XP or the level up like HP boost definitely saved Cryonic's life. There goes from five to six right as those Archer shots were going through uh, and did not find the kill. Night and day difference, by the way, from game number one. Like... Let's go Asgard were the ones who were getting super aggressive finding all the kills early on. That is not the case for game number two. Threat level midnight seemed to be running the show in just about every single lane. Taylor, oh, we, we've seen this dance before. Stop me if you haven't heard it, but Distortion have getting the three, man. Do you have any healing? Can you do anything here? I think you just got to try and return a kill, and I don't think you got it. The Aegis out from Sonic. The death locked down. The kill goes to Sonic. So we, I guess now we know why the Aegis is picked up for a no simple beads? moment like that. Mid lane, Star Pond, stunned out. Should be a similar story we just saw in Solo for Sonic, which is just, there's just no chance, and there is indeed. So one kill for Archie on a Star Pond, one kill for Sonic on to Distortion. First one for Let's Go Asgard, but the fourth total for TLM. And that's what I was talking about earlier. Star Pond didn't have the beats, didn't quite have the transformation up, and that means life of the party is essentially a guaranteed kill. Uh, Cryonic doesn't do too much damage now, but with that help from Archie, that'd be no big deal. Gold Fury is the target. You can see Relic is nearby. Could definitely step up here, but it looks like might just be going for speed. But yeah, I think this goes away at threat level midnight every day of the week. And they pick up first Gold Fury under seven minutes into this one, Malum. Even with the kill on a Distortion F. Now Typhon Fang has been finished. And I think if Titan Fang was finished previously, we might not, might not even seen that kill go down. They're, 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 like that little bit of life steal goes a long way. It's crazy how much Typhon Sing does, uh, especially once you get the Bloodbound book online. If you're going for that combination, the amount that you're able to sustain if you are Distortion is going to be kind of otherworldly. But this might have to wait. This Sasuke could be in some trouble, but does have Archie for backup. It might actually look for the engage here. Archie actually got copied by the Morgan. Good damage onto Baron, no kill. Sasuke not out of trouble. Is Relic ready to chase down? The Phantom Shell out for some safety, and it works well. Chaotic, but no pickups in the mid lane. So I can finish my question to you, which is that we... I'm trying to think of the best way to word this, but we were looking for a frontliner for TLM. We expected the Anubis to be that frontliner because you only had the Baron and the Anubis. You already said the team was squishy. If Anubis goes into all damage, is one Baron frontlining enough? Oh my goodness. First of all, that burst is ridiculous. Beads gets pulled, unfortunately, for Disco Fairy. Yeah, you better head back to base. Second of all, um, usually the way that I've seen Distortion build, second item is going to be Genji's, and then, uh, you know, it depends on where the build goes from there. So Distortion is not going to be the tankiest on the map. Oh, <laughs> we're just, we're just eating that for fun. Bramble Blast to the face. We had airstrike. Okay, my bad. Uh, Disco Fairy, you deserve to die on that one, unfortunately. Wow. Three levels behind, and Valeron is just owning this side of the map. Yeah, uh, I don't think either of us expected Disco to just kind of stand there and, and tank that. I was like, oh, yeah. he's going to back up. He's going to back up. He's gonna it was back like up. that scene in Infinity War where Drax is like, do it. I can take it. And they're like, you cannot. You cannot take it. Do not <laughs> you shoot You cannot him. take that damage. Yeah, you cannot take that. And unfortunately, Disco Fairy also could not take that distortion out. This could be a kill. Aegis beautifully timed, but you have the wrap after the fact. You might have it. I don't know. I guess it wasn't up, unfortunately. I was waiting. Must, you had me in suspense. Yeah, must, must have just used it. Now Distortion F trade is old for Aegis. And guess what? Three more, or two more rather, coming over. Distortion F better back up. Disco Fairy right back to lane, which is risky. Everything is missing. If you threw a kitchen sink, it'd be broken without hitting Disco Fairy too. So <laughs> Disco fine for the moment. But after a solo kill like that, I, I gotta say, or I guess it was a solo even with Archie standing there being a, a, a spectator for it. I have a lot of respect for Disco going right back to trading, but it might just be a oh, mistake. Yeah. Wild Hunt too. Respect. Yeah, I, uh, I have respect. <laughs> Unfortunately, my respect, you know, it's black and white. <laughs> yep. Your, your respect, not Jeez, worth enough, please. unfortunately, <laughs> because you don't have your beads, and Valeron has been on point, man. Think about the Neath, game number one, stealing away that fire giant. Oh, no. I, I Oh, I thought he was going to sit there and wait for him to fly in. He might. Maybe, or just ambush the speed buff. Why not? You're the CERN. No fear. Full executioner, full devos. Look at Disco Fairy. 
12 stacks on Devos, still working on item number two. Night and day DPS difference. It doesn't start on. Can you even transform? No. Archie picks up kill number two. And threat level midnight tries to push that gold lead even further in their favor. I gotta say, threat level midnight's mechanics this game have been so crisp. Uh, the little mechanics, you know, the ones that we often don't even get time to zoom out and look at, like being able to time beads, being able to pre-beads, ulting through CCs. It's those little things that can put you above, especially in a tournament like this on the road to Vegas. You you need those mechanics to as building blocks to get better as a team, and TLM has certainly done that up to this point today. Valerion in particular has been a worth noting current. I mean, look at this. Ready to take the 1v2. He kind of, I, I feel like he wants to take the 1v2. I think he definitely does want to take it, but he doesn't know who else is coming. And as you can see, Relic, there's a Fenrir on the way. Probably smart to stay back, even with beads available. I mean, a 1v3 is just a bit ridiculous. Player on, ooh, Surely. Dash does get caught, so he's definitely beads. gonna be used. No kill potential, but did get the wild hunt out, so ultimate down. Can anyone rotate to help Valerion on here? He's stepping up as if he wants to fight. You can see that Archie's relatively close, but it looks like that kill was called off. Maybe just trying to set up for a future Gold Fury is the current play. But Bro loses beads and then just immediately says, all right, I'm going back in. And Archie yeah, finally showed him wants to fight help. so bad. Can they find a fight here and assassinate anything? Anything. I mean, like for the party? CLM want to take this fight, but they don't want to commit anything to the fight. I, I guess with gold up, they don't want to overcommit to anything, but they're so ahead. If they did take it, it'd be easy. Oh my god! Phoenix Feather! <laughs> what a time to click over. Phoenix hey. Feather moment. Yeah, yeah that, that is just essentially a reset on your HP. 65 magical protection, definitely not bad, but a very, very long cooldown. 240 seconds means you will not be seeing that for quite some time. Gold 3 started up. Valeron has the minions to tank up, but still, it's got to be the fight. That TLM are after life of the party, assassinate anything could start this and get. Oh, never mind. It's just gone. No one it's stepped gone. up. They just watched. Okay, I lied. The executioner, uh, glaive auto attacks from Valeron. They shredded that much quicker than I thought. Coming up on 9,000 gold at 12 and a half minutes. Might be even more. Visco Fairy realized the demon was in the stealth grass and instantly started to back away. Mid tier one being looked at. Trouble. Trelly, the. Trouble. I mean, yeah, Trelly, the levels. They're. Uh -oh, we want to talk about uh-oh territory and gold. This is uh-oh territory in levels. I mean, this is significant. And you know what, Malum? I don't think it's stopping anytime soon. Four levels for Archie. Four levels for Valeron. Even in mid, that's pretty cool. Two levels in solo. Archie heading over towards solo. Doesn't do a lot of damage uh, to Relic, but will just be able to pop Tech Okagi and continue to run away for the time being. I mean, hey, let's go Asgard is in a position where they only can really just step up to the, try and defend objectives, right? Defending your buffs is scary. Defending in lane is scary. And Valeron, you can eat these auto attacks. Like, just, just try and fight at this point because your, your itemization... Wait, Valeron still only has Devos and Exe? You gotta have a full Demon Blade off this back, probably, or like a, a Dagger of Frenzy or something. That's gonna be ridiculous. Did he just pull him out of the old life of the party? I think he did. Might not matter. One more hit will do it, but cannot find it. Unfortunate. I'm pretty sure. I mean, beads were available regardless, but I think Sasuke might have pulled Star Pawn out of open the gates there. Yeah. Gotta learn it somehow. Gotta learn the tech. And when you're this ahead, it's kind of fun to just, you know, come combine things, see how they work. Relic is nearby, but this is a level 15 Kern. I'm pretty sure you don't want this. <laughs> Relic trying to contest the buff, doesn't get it, and definitely does not want the smoke. <laughs> we'll walk away. Dude, Valeron has so much gold right now. Like, That's crazy. Still so isn't much packed. Gold. I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting to see what we get. Probably like full Demon Blade and like tier one Musashi's dual swords, or one, again, one more solo, then we back. Shred. Only time will tell. Valeron clearly does want the fight, but Disco Fairy learned their lesson. And anytime they see the Surin, you turn and run. Five gold, I mean, five level differential here. Fortunately, can't land it. Here's the ult for beads. Vanish, not gonna do enough, but the tier one tower is the real target here uh, for Valeron. No one on the side of Lesko Arsgard is gonna be here in time to try and help out. So definitely take the tower. Where's everyone else at though? 
And this Aegis, I honestly thought was kind of like a lame pickup at first, but it's been worth its weight uh, in solo lane in particular because Sonic is going damage oriented, right? First item, Hydra's. The Phoenix Feather does give a good bit of magic prod, but that old, you know, if you, if you didn't have that Aegis, I think would have found at least two kills so far for Sonic. Larion's backing, so keep your eyes on the item chart. I'll keep my eyes on distortion if we can get away. Ragnarok catches the beats, no kill. The wrap after, maybe even a kill for distortion? Not quite onto Relic. Taylor's been stuck in the tower for a little bit, dealing with a lot. There's the wrap. There's the plague. Will the locust be enough? Taylor gets the riptide away. One more even wrap. More? Come on, one more wrap. You got it. There, there it is. <laughs> and now Archie's here just in case, but doesn't Your steal it. That would have been disrespectful. And also, Larion backed full demon blade and then some. Yep. Yep, that will uh, that will be tough to try and deal with. I mean, because again, no one could step up to Valerion anyways, and now with the full Demon Blade and even so more much, damage on so the way. Many items compared to everyone else. I mean, it's just unlimited farm on that side of the map because no one can step up. I and mean, we've seen Relic try and go for a gank, but now it's a six level differential. Like Relic is even with his own support. So yeah, I don't hate this call at all. Fire Giant is on the mind of CLM. No one but Sonic could step up and touch. And will that even be the case? Sonic aware, perhaps. No, just that blue buff. That fire giant is free as free can get. TLM, eight kills, 52,000 gold, and a fire giant around five. Uh oh, territory lie. has turned to panic territory for Let's Go when Asgard. When you said 52,000 gold, I thought you meant they were 52,000 gold ahead. And I was like, you know what? I've never heard of that big of a gold lead, but I wouldn't be surprised. Just kidding. Well, you know what? We're, you know, we're, we're vibing. High, high kill game. Maybe another death here. The dyslexia really gets me, and I have a lot of problems since we can't see the exact number. So a lot of times I just start reading the big number and I let everyone else do the math. And that's fine, because so far it's been working out. Gold Fury once again started out by DLM. They'll confirm their third for the game thus far. And uh, remember how I said Distortion F once when a tanky Anubis build, I think just fully committed to the damage. Did yeah, just go back and pick up crazy. a full purification. But besides that, yeah. We're going to see full damage Anubis, and uh, it's been paying off a totem of death. Gives so much penetration. This works so well with Anubis's kit. And now, again, squad beads, Ymir, Fenrir, a possible second Fenrir. Also very good uh, for TLM because Sasuke, if you, if you guys haven't got your hands on Baron just yet, his heal actually scales based on the amount of cooldown rate you have, uh, which works with Breastplate, of course, works with the Talisman of Purification. Uh, doesn't really work with Spirit Row, but that's just a nice way to get tanky. Uh, so definitely working out so far. It makes the Spirit an absolute threat. It makes anti-heal extremely important, which is why we see two Onks picked up. One from Sonic and one from Taylor. They are worried about the healing on the side of TLM. A natural upgrade from the poison we actually talked about in the previous game as well. If you're still learning those items, and it's Smite too. Starpawn, interested in at least a little bit of damage on RG, but a little bit of damage indeed. As the rest of TLM, they're in right lane, pushing up on the tier two tower, and only a soft defense of two. One might even be brought back, but nice ulti from the Emir. Now Baron takes it, life of the party, brings back the Emir, and that Aegis was cute in laning phase, but cute no more, and down goes Sonic. Tier one, gone. Tier two, gone. Phoenix is the target, TLM. Do you have anything? Talisman Purification goes down, but so does the Phoenix. Can you even live if you're Relic? One more auto will do it, and Valeron picks up a double. This could be more if they chain him together. Oh, but Distortion steals it. It's doomed. It's so doomed. A triple kill for Valeron. Let's go, Asgard. Death's door indeed. A heck of a game from Threat Level Midnight. A miracle doesn't begin to strike it. A quadra kill on the way out, and TLM. They take it 2-0 over Let's Go Asgard. And that's the, I, the way I see things, Malum, is in ways of pentakills. And the second I saw two, I was like, you stole the penta. Like, once that kill goes through and distortion yep. up gets the last hit, I was like, that could have definitely been a penta. Ends up being a quadra, and I would have tried to farm in base to go for it. But regardless, uh, very, very one-sided here from Threat Level Midnight. And that was not the way that game number one was. Let's Go Asgard. They looked clean in the early, but I think draft alone is what won the day here it was very difficult to try and fight into that level of cc um, they played around duo lane so well threat level midnight had an unkillable cernanos which is hard to do because again no cc immunity on cern 
doesn't exactly have the best DPS in, yeah. in the early game. You you come online very hard once you get a lead like like they did, but Disco Fairy, I think that one moment where it just eats the Bramble Blast, dies, loses tier one tower, that's when that lane was officially over. Like there was a two level deficit and you're like, okay, I'm Jingwei, I'm going to wait until I get crit online. Once you die, respawn, your tower is gone and you're like, I'm four levels behind. <laughs> there's nothing you can do anymore. You just sit under tier two and say, I hope someone comes to save me because I yeah. can't dig out of this hole by myself. Guys, I'm turning up my music and I'm using VGS the rest of the game, <laughs> just so everybody knows. <laughs> yeah. That's all you can do. That is a that is a strong 2-0 for Threat Little Midnight and a tough uh, a, a tough a tough end for Swiss there for mm -hmm. let's go at Asgard again. Again, not the end though of the road. Last chance qualifier for those bottom eight teams of Swiss stage for the regions. We'll be uh we'll see how Let's Go Asgard can improve before it because there were some positive signs, especially sure. in game number one. Yeah, I agree. I think that they showed not only how to get an early lead, yeah, how to force that lead as well. It wasn't as, they, as if they were afraid to pull objectives. Again, that fire call was thin margins. Um, and if, if Valerian doesn't steal it, we could be talking about a completely different set, not just yeah. game, uh, because you can kind of ride the that momentum, that mental, uh, and try and put enemy squad on the back foot. But that isn't exactly what happens. And of course, this game, there's not much to gloss over. If you're if you're doing VOD review, I'd probably skip this game entirely just because it's one of those moments where you're like, dude, we were down from minute one to minute done. And everything that kind of snowballed from that was because of the lead. Like, oh, you, why'd you exactly. push up there, bro? I'm, I'm four levels down. What do you want me to do? Like, yeah. It's one of those moments. Pretty much the only thing you can do is feedback. look at builds or, or, or yeah, look at yeah. maybe positioning for the last couple of fights and say, OK, well, I mean, you could have you could have done this. And that, but that's all you can do. You just have to you kind of got to brush it off you and move forward. Exactly. And you just get locked in uh, for that last chance qualifier, like you were mentioning, because, you know, it, it stinks to get knocked out 03, but it, it's a learning experience at the end of the day. It is indeed, but still plenty of Swiss to go, and especially for Threat Level Midnight. Let's take a look at that bracket to get an idea of just what we're talking about. We just saw Threat Level Midnight take a 2 0 over Let's Go Asgard again. That shoots them up to the 1 and 2 side of the bracket to face whoever appears there from those 1-1 one, one games in the middle, sandwiched between the elimination and the, the move-forward games that we're seeing later on today. So lots to go for, for uh, Let's Go Asgard again in the la last chance qualifier. We will see them soon. A big W for th Threat Level Midnight. Cannot understate that. But still more games to go today. So let's take a look at the schedule and see what is on tap. Also, I've had the off-air games going on as well. Yodi Gang, Chase the enemy. We'll have that here in a bit. But on air, we've got Mockingbird versus Giovanni Giorgio coming up. Giovanni Giorgio is a team, Trelli, that has, from the open tournaments before the Founder Series, demanded your attention. But Mockingbird, and, I, and I'm glad you're, you're on here to kind of give your takes on them. They're a team who's demanded attention in a way of, hey, you will know who we are as a team by the end of this tournament. Absolutely. Some rising stars, definitely some names you'll remember from Smite 1. And uh, pretty pretty cemented is my opinion in that number 4 to 5 slot uh, in this bracket. Does not mean that they can't take down GG. I mean, this is a team that has cemented themselves as that number 3 spot. I think has the potential to go way higher, but unfortunately has uh, fumbled in the past two semifinals uh, of those open qualifiers. But now in Swiss, has not taken an L just yet, and they've been looking real clean. So... This is a team that can definitely lock in over a weekend or two and uh, improve just dramatically uh, through the week doing scrims and stuff like that. So we might see a completely night and day different squad from GG, but man, Mockingbird, Mockingbird, as you said, demand your attention, your respect as well. This was yeah. one of the sets I was most excited for uh, this week, and it's just an absolute pleasure that I get to cast it with you, Malum. I know, an Anthony Squared cast and a one we've both been looking forward to. You can't really yep. beat that combination. You certainly Mockingbird can. for me is just, they're this team of, they're names that you that you do recognize if you're a Smite 1 knower, and they're names mm -hmm. of people as well from even the amateur scene where they have been knocking on that door for a long time. And Smite 2, the Founder Series, the Road to Vegas, it, it's the opportunity they've been waiting for to showcase their skills on a grander stage. And against a team like Giovanni Giorgio, you know, in North America, there's a lot of talk about Food Drive for Globe and them proving themselves against teams that they have to prove themselves against, like the 
Team Boba, Teenage Boba Five M's, the scrumptious of the world. Mm-hmm. For EMEA, this is a, a game of a similar caliber for me, and also just a game of how what what does GG have? Are they truly that roster to respect, or are those small stumbles we've seen a sign of something greater? And that's that. Only time will tell, right? Because again, getting a win here is huge. These we just saw teams that were 2 The teams we're about to watch are two zero. You get this win, you skip, you skip a the lot. playoffs, and you get to sit back. And just watch. You get to sit back and learn. Figure out how the meta is evolving, how you want to play. You don't have to show your strats to anyone. And I think that can be invaluable uh, in a situation like this. So can't wait to jump into it. Uh, and very excited for it. Refill the snacks. Refill the drink. We meet back here soon. We'll be right back with that set here on Smite 2 Founder Series. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 